Hey folks, I uh, got a couple packages as you can see here, both Kershaw related, one is from Kershaw, the other contains a Kershaw knife, and uh, without further ado, let's just jump right in and take a look at them. Uh, this one here is a Kershaw Random Leak. Now I've had a bit of a time getting my hands on a Kershaw Random Leak, and the reason for that is, if you go and you look it up online, for those of you who aren't too familiar with it, and I'll uh, skip pulling out the paperwork from here and just jump right to the knife. Uh, if you're familiar at all with the Kershaw leak, you'll know that the plain edge version is actually rather uh, limited in its numbers and it fetches a fair price. It goes for a decent chunk of change. And this model that's in here is actually a combo edge. And I know that goes a little bit against what you've seen on my other videos as far as you know, I don't really care for combo edge knives. I'm kind of okay with fully serrated or uh, fully plain edge blades, but not so much the combo edge blades. Let's take a quick look at it. And you can see there that it is indeed a combo edge. So, the reason why I have received this is because I've had numerous attempts at trying to get the plain edge version. In fact, I just recently, a couple weeks ago, bought a plain edge random leak. and I paid a fair price for it. I got a good deal on it, but it was still pretty uh, pricey, at least you know for my uh, uh, according to my standards, I should say. And that one arrived to me, and it had an issue, and uh, it it had to go back. It had a it had something that I wasn't really too happy with, and the seller who sold it to me did not know uh, was actually a, an issue. He you know I brought it to his attention, and I sent it back, and we were both pretty disappointed that we couldn't get that deal to go through and he refunded my money and I moved on and this one somebody had posted up on an online knife forum and the price was too good to pass up even though it has that combo edge and you know what I can I can live with that or maybe I'll go crazy and grind that down and make a weird recurve I don't know but isn't that a neat design and just for comparison I already have my standard 1660 leak waiting in the wings so I can kind of show you the difference between the two there you can see obviously the body is nearly identical different finish slightly different tone different color same blade length as best as I can tell they just have that slightly different tip instead of this th this will be referred to often as a modified Warncliffe blade because it's almost flat along the belly but it does have a little bit of a curve to it and then it almost has sort of like a modified sheep's foot or this kind of sloping uh, spine to the blade, which I've always kind of liked. This one's always kind of got that sort of toothpick, you know, really piercy, real thin, slicey, pointy tip to it. And the random leak is a little bit more reinforced. This, of course, borrows the blade from the random task that uh, both of these knives being designed by Ken Onion. And let me zoom, not zoom, but let me hold it so it focuses. See there at the base of the blade, S30V? That's, of course, a really nice steel. Some people have kind of moved beyond it, and they don't think it's quite so great, but I, th I think it's pretty good in uh, all the capacities that I'm interested in for, you know, for your typical everyday carry knives. There's the model number, 1660T, G-R-Y-S-T. And uh, so it's a really nice premium steel. Now, this is an older Kershaw leak, and I don't know if it mentions the blade steel on here or not. It doesn't look like it does. But to my recollection, this is actually 440A, and I don't think they use this steel anymore. I think they've moved on and now they use 13, whatever it is, 13C26N or 14C28N. One of the Sandvik steels, I think. Or they might even be using like 420 series steel. But I think this one's 440A. So this is actually an older one. And uh, so this is a pretty nice upgrade in steel. Not a big fan of that combo edge, but I can live with it. Because the price that I got on this knife was outstanding. I paid less for this knife than if you were to walk into a store and buy the standard model leak. Which is really nice. The guy was a great guy. He shipped it fast. He sent it priority, which he absolutely didn't have to do. And uh, good stuff. So the uh, one of the, the catch, you could say, is that you can see this blade does have some wear. So it's uh, it's brand new, but it's got some sort of shelf wear. This might have been handled. It might have been a display piece. Uh, it's not a blemished model. You know, it's not the 4X model. So this is a full production, you know, retail knife. It just 
got scuffed up in one way or another but that edge is perfect and new I can see that it's factory fresh at least it looks like it is it looks good to my eyes and either way I don't care because the price was so good I just can take it put it in my pocket not worry about it getting scratched up I do kind of like the the uh, handle on this one compared to the standard leak this one's pretty slick and slippery with that smooth bead blasted finish and this one's a lot grabbier and grippier so that's kind of fun so got that guy in and that's going to just get thrown into the old rotation i don't carry my older leak very much in fact it's probably been a couple months since i've had this in my pocket but when i want a smaller blade something a little bit more discreet a little bit narrower i'll throw this in my pocket and uh, now this one's going to get a little bit of time to get carried around and then let's go ahead and use this knife to open the packages i got from kershaw themselves and there's nothing fancy in here this is simply a uh, a pocket clip at least it should be somewhere down in here there it is and that pocket clip let me dust off some of that crud there this pocket clip actually goes to the Kershaw Ram which some of you saw in my other video where I was a video response to Fort Worth Glock Guy where I was talking about practical uses for my EDC knives and I actually have two of the Kershaw Ram this is really easy to close one-handed but not so much there I kind of got it you can kind of flick it close like an axis lock or a caged ball bearing lock. Um, I actually got two of these. I got one in red and I've got one in black because I like it so much. And you're probably looking at this, at least some of you are looking at this and saying, wow, that's a hideous knife. I would agree with you when I first got it, I did not care for the looks of the Kershaw, or excuse me, before I bought it, I did not really care for the look of the Kershaw Ram. It's really busy and I still think that it is. I'm not really sure what's up with the three thumb studs going on there. It's got these G10, you know, little raised scales over aluminum. Uh, it's got this weird kind of fat clip there. And, you know, just all the different colored hardware, you know, the the little stop pin there at the back of the, of the blade is a different color from the screw hardware. You know, you've got the little bit of stainless steel showing behind the hawk lock switch. And uh, so it's just kind of a, it's just kind of a funky design, but it is so much fun to flick open and close. It locks up so solid, and it's so comfortable to carry that I just could not pass it up. And so I've been hearing a lot of good things about it. I've been reading up online on some of the forums, you know, uh, read a few different uh, personal accounts from folks who carried one and really liked it. And I said, you know what? Let me just get one. If I hate it, I'll move on and I'll get something else, sell it, trade it, whatever. And I was really pleasantly surprised with it when it came in. It's kind of got sort of a spider co ish choil there at the base of the blade, which is really nice. So uh, the only thing I probably don't like about the ram is this little swoop at the back. I almost would have liked for that to go straight across, but that helps give a little bit of a space for the flipper to poke through when it's closed. So you can tell that that's kind of what they were going for there. And you can see how quickly it flips out, almost like an assisted opener. I'm going to stop rambling about this knife because this isn't supposed to be a review. I'll give you a review in another video. But I just really like this knife, and I just kind of wanted to share why I thought it was so cool. But this, as you might have seen a moment ago, is the first production run of this knife. And it says 1 of 500. That does not mean that this was the first one off the line. Every single one of those first 500 first production run Kershaws will say 1 of 500 because, indeed, they are all 1 of 500. So... If you see that anywhere, don't let someone fool you into thinking that that's the first one. It's not. They're all going to say that. Uh, anyway, the first production run's a little bit different as far as I could tell from the full production run. The G10 around the pivot screw there is a little bit different. You can see that this one's kind of notched back a little. And also the clip. Let me close these before I slice myself while I'm doing this. Oh, and this is a very ambidextrous knife. If you're left-handed, you can totally use your index finger or your middle finger on that, on that lock and close it. Well, okay, I'm kind of lame at it because I'm right-handed, but it, it is pretty easy to do. And uh, the clip, let me see if you can tell when I hold them up side by side. You probably can't tell. Maybe you can. You see that? The first production run clip is thicker. It's really thick, and it's really tight. This one's easy to get in and out of my pocket, but it's still it still retains the knife really well. It's not going anywhere. It's still very strong. This one is just really, really thick, and it adds to the tension. I mean, I can't even barely... It takes quite a bit of force to get my tip of my thumb under there to kind of click it up. But this, I asked for them to send me one of the regular production run clips. And let me try to show you while it's in the baggie. Let me take it out. And uh, this one is hopefully a little bit thinner and more in line with the one that's on the red model there. Let me put it right up there. 
It might be hard to tell on camera, but I can see while I look over the camera and I look at it, it's definitely thinner. So the clip that's on the full, you know, production run that doesn't have some of the differences of that first production knife um, is going to be closer to this one here. So it's a little bit thinner and that should make it a little bit more manageable once I attach that and put that in my pocket. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And uh, you know what, while I have you here, I've got my... Let me get out my Torx driver here. I had this handy because I was going to do this after I finished the video, but why don't we all take the clip apart together? Why not? And Kershaw is really cool. I didn't ask for any screws, at least I don't think I did. And they, uh, they gave them to me anyway, so that's nice. I have some extra screws. Didn't need those, but Kershaw, if you're, uh, for those of you who don't know, Kershaw is really cool about sending you replacement torsion bars, uh, pocket clips, screws, pivot screws, anything that they have that they can send you, they will. And uh, to my knowledge, it's always free. So that's not something that we as loyal customers want to abuse. But when you know that you need something, you need a fresh part from Kershaw, they're always really good about sending it along and not giving you any hassle. So let's take that slightly thinner pocket clip and put that on. And that's already set exactly where I want. I think this is where they come from the factory. I think they come right hand, right handed tip up. And here's the part where I struggle looking over the viewfinder of my camera, looking past it, trying to get that screw put back in place. Oh, what a colossal failure. Get in there. That's the only downside of the pocket clip screws is they are so tiny. I can hear my neighbor's dog yapping away in the background. And there goes that. Hang on one second. Let me maybe get it lined up with the driver and then run it through there. We'll see if this part actually makes it to the final video. Maybe I'm just talking to myself and no one's ever going to see this part. That's better. I think that was a better way to do it. All right. This is the uh, Pittsburgh Pro uh, Torx driver security bit. Torx driver that I showed on another video. I think I have a little brief review of it. Um, nice driver. Now I did have someone send me a comment in a video where they mentioned that theirs had actually stripped out. I've had this one for months and I've had no problems with any of the drivers. None of them are worn out. I will say that, you know, it, to some extent you do get what you pay for and this isn't a very expensive tool. If you want some really, you know, high hardness tipped uh, Torx drivers, I would recommend going with something from, you know, maybe a, a larger, more trusted brand like uh, the other drivers that I'll use. Uh, in place of this one on occasion are Craftsman drivers and those I've had for like a decade and I just have no problems with them. They're all in perfect condition. The tips are all still perfectly sharp and not stripped or worn out in any way. So if you are looking for something a little bit higher end and you don't mind paying a little bit more money, go ahead and get yourself you know, some Craftsman or maybe go to Home Depot. Maybe the Husky stuff is a little bit harder wearing. But this, uh, this little screw set this little driver set that I have here I've had no problems with it and for the price I paid which I think it was like five bucks from Harbor Freight um, it works like a champ so it might just you know if you have some really tough screws it might take a little bit of a beating it might get a little bit worn um, and if you do ever have any screws that you're trying to break free from a knife and you're really struggling it probably has Loctite and I've read a couple things you can do one is heat it you can use either a heat gun or a hair dryer or if you have one um, clean off the tip of a soldering iron um, plug it in, heat it up, and then touch it to the screw for a few seconds. Take it away and then unscrew it. And that should heat that Loctite, that uh, thread locking material. It should heat that up. It should soften and then it'll help you break that screw free. So there's a random tip that you probably weren't expecting in a new purchase or unboxing video. But there we go. There's the new clip. And that, I mean, hopefully you can, that comes through on the video right away that you can see that is so much easier to lift free from the knife than that monstrously thick one that's on there. So thank you so much to Kershaw. If any of you folks are watching, uh, even if you're not, I hope my thanks goes flying through the ether and that you receive it on your end. Uh, thank you for that clip. And that was totally free and they shipped that fast in about a week. Thanks to the guy, I won't mention him on here, but thank you to the fellow who sold me this knife for a great price. This will be a lot of fun and uh, it'll get a lot of use. There we go, the Kershaw Random Leak. Check that out if you guys are interested. I believe this one is still available for sale. Kershaw Ram discontinued. Don't hesitate. If you at all like this 
or you've watched some other videos or you've read anything online about it and it seems interesting, don't wait because Kershaw did discontinue this knife and uh, they're not going to be around for much longer. There's still a few places online that have them, you know, at retail. For a fair price, probably run you about anywhere from 55 to 65 bucks, but in my mind, well worth it. So there you go. This was supposed to be a short video, and guess what? Like always, it's not. <laughs> I thank you all for coming along for the ride, and I will see you in another video. Bye.